Hi, my name's John Scott. I'm a freelance filmmaker based in the southwest of the UK. And today in this video, I'm looking at two of the latest gimbals on the market. We've got the Gion Crane 3 Lab and the Fayentech AK 4500. Now I've been using gimbals for several years now and the technology has really improved leaps and bounds over that period of time. Now Xi'an and Fayentech are both experienced makers within the gimbal market and these are their latest offering. So I've been really excited to have a play with these gimbals, test them out, see how gimbal designs have improved and evolved over the years. And I'm gonna talk about a lot of the things that these two have in common, some of the differences, and hopefully that's gonna give you an idea as a filmmaker of what is the most suitable tool for your type of filming. Now these gimbals both have a lot in common with the way they're designed. They are both a single central grip, but they also have a top handle that allows the ergonomic use in what is called the underslung mode, so typically used for filming low angle shots. And this is something that these types of gimbals have been moving towards and having used earlier gimbals that don't have this kind of top handle, I was particularly interested to see how effective and useful it would be using these top handles in the underslung mode. So starting out with a couple of the headline specs, the Crane 3 has a maximum payload of 4.5 kilograms and the AK4500 just ever so slightly more at around 4.6 kilograms. The majority of the filming I did with the Panasonic GH5 and GH5S uh, with a Metabones adapter and a Canon EF 24-105 to f4L series lens. And this is a pretty hefty setup. It's very much front heavy. So I was interested to see how both gimbals would handle this type of setup. Now onto the initial setup of both gimbals and balancing. It's very similar on both. If you've used gimbals in the past, you'll know that you have to firstly balance your camera in the three axis that the gimbal has. So the pan, the roll and the tilt axis. Uh, both the gimbals come with a small tripod, meaning that you can set it up just about on any level surface. And this is pretty much standard with gimbals these days. Now, a really cool feature that both these gimbals have is locks on each of the axis. And where this comes into play is when storing the gimbal. So it will very much sit flat, which makes it easy to transport but also when balancing because you can isolate the axis that you're trying to balance, lock the other two off and make sure you get that one really dialed in before moving on. So once the gimbals are balanced and powered on, we can now have a look at the user interfaces for each of the gimbals. The AK4500 uses a really cool, unique touchscreen to access the different menus. And I was actually surprised at how well this works. I thought it might be a little bit clunky and difficult to use, but it's smooth, it's responsive. The screen is nice and big and clear, so it's easy to see what mode you're in, and changing options is also very easy. Now the Crane 3 uses a slightly smaller screen, and it doesn't have touchscreen, but it uses the jog wheel. It's perfectly functional, it's easy to use. Um, it also has a number of dedicated buttons to change through the various modes as well. And I didn't have any problems at all with the user interface on the Crane 3. So both gimbals come with a quick release plate that goes into the gimbal, but also on top of that, there's another quick release plate for the actual camera. Setup times and taking your camera off, putting it back on, is pretty much instantaneous and there's no need for any rebalancing or making sure that quick release plate is in exactly the same position as it was before. So let's move on now and have a look at how the gimbals handle for real world shooting conditions. And in order to test the setups, I decided to do a combination of shooting. I thought I would do some slow controlled moves such as tracking shots, smooth pans, tilts, crane shots and then also try and put them through their paces and see how they perform in more challenging conditions and film some trail running over some very uneven ground. Now what I can say is for slow moving shots, both gimbals produce very smooth footage pretty much out of the box. What's good to see is that you can change the sensitivity of the various different modes and that's easily done on the gimbals themselves. Now that's something that I personally prefer. Obviously there's the option to use the various smartphone apps, but for me when I'm shooting, if I wanna change something quickly, being able to do it on the unit itself is really important. 
So both these gimbals have the ability to be used in underslung mode. And this is typically extremely helpful, especially for those low shots. I did find myself actually using both gimbals in this way probably about 40 to 50% of the time. And once again, having used older gimbals that just have that central handle, um, it was certainly easier on the arms. It allows for longer takes. In terms of overall performance for this type of filming, both gimbals do an excellent job of producing smooth, cinematic looking footage. Another feature that both gimbals have in common is what's known as the vortex mode or inception mode. And this is the ability uh, to rotate the camera 360 degrees throughout the roll axis. I find that it's a bit of a novelty. I think it's definitely one of those shots where less is definitely more but it's also cool to have that capability for those times when you do want to create that really creative looking type of shots. Now both gimbals have a specific mode for fast moves. It's called the go mode on the Crane 3 and it's the action mode on the AK4500. And this would be typically used where you're trying to do whip pans now for these type of shots, you definitely require a bit of practice. It's definitely gonna be one where you're gonna be doing multiple takes. You need to fine tune the settings a bit, I found, but they do work very well. The motors are extremely powerful. They can move the camera particularly quickly. So as long as you have the right lens selection, the right focal length, both these gimbals are capable of producing those type of shots. So on to a few differences between the two gimbals. The AK4500 package that I had came with a brushless follow focus motor. Now this is available for the Crane 3, but I didn't have it with my test unit. So a follow focus obviously allows you to manually change the focus using the wheel on the side of the gimbal. And I must admit, I was a little bit skeptical of how good this would be, but I'm glad to say that I was actually surprised at how useful it was. What I typically would do would be to set my focus manually using my hands on the, the lens barrel. But actually the follow focus on the AK4500 was smooth and responsive enough that I could actually film and change focus at the same time. So rack focus between foreground and background. Now one unique feature that the AK4500 gimbal has with the package that I had for review was what they call the hyperlink remote. And this is a multifunction handle which you attach to the gimbal, it's used for the underslung mode, but can also actually be removed. And once it's removed is where it sort of comes into its own. Now what it allows you to do is remotely control the gimbal exactly as you would with your hands actually on the unit. Now the controller also has this other function and it works as a motion controller, a bit like a Wii remote. So you can actually change where the gimbal is facing and pointing by moving the motion controller with your hand in the air. Now it did feel a little bit strange doing this initially, but actually it's very responsive and you can learn quite quickly how to control the gimbal nice and smoothly just with small movements of your hand. So overall, both these gimbals offer excellent performance. It's clear to see that this newer generation of gimbals has really raised the bar and getting smooth cinematic looking footage with pretty much any DSLR, mirrorless, and even those small cinema camera packages is pretty much a given now. In terms of which one is right for you, it's gonna come down to your personal preference and your particular shooting style and which functions you use the most. However, what I would say is whichever one you choose is unlikely you're gonna be disappointed with your choice. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you've got any comments or questions, please do drop them in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.